Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this unusual exoplanet that's quite extraordinary. This is Kepler 452b and you're going to find out in this video why this is actually one of the most exciting exoplanets we've discovered in the last 10 years. Welcome to What The Math. So this particular exoplanet is actually kind of far away from us, so don't get your hopes up about going here anytime soon. This is what it sort of looks like in Space Engine. Um, it's basically a relatively beautiful purple looking world that just so happens to be in a very similar star system, almost identical actually, to our own solar system. So let's talk a little bit more about where this exoplanet is located. And for this, we're going to be using the Universe Sandbox just so that we can actually see what's happening here. So Kepler-452 is a star that's remarkably very similar to our own Sun. It's actually only a little bit hotter than our Sun by like just a few degrees. It's also just a little bit older. Well, actually, okay, it's about 1.4 billion years older, but it is also a G2 type star, just like our Sun. It's also about... Uh, 4% more massive, but because it's a little bit older, it's about 11% uh, larger. So if I were to try to place our sun next to it, or at least try to hover our sun over it, you would realize that it's very, very, very similar. The sun is practically identical to this. Now, at the same time, um, except for this similarity, there's another one. And the similarity is in this planet that we discovered a few years ago, but it was only confirmed in 2015. This planet, known as Kepler-452b, the only object discovered here, which seems to be very water-like or covered in water in this particular simulation, but we're going to change this soon, is located at a distance of 1.04 astronomical units. That means that it's about 4% more far away than Earth is from the Sun. In other words, if I were to show you where the actual habitable zone is, it's basically very similar to where Earth is. So the location of this exoplanet is remarkably similar to where Earth is located. Now, these excitement or similarities don't end there. The other unusual thing about this object is that a single year here is only about 20 days longer than the year on Earth. And um, what's interesting is that the um, assumed temperature here is maybe just a little bit warmer than it is on Earth. So in other words, if I were to place Earth next to this, basically in orbit around the star, um, it would most likely be just a little bit hotter than usual, mostly because this particular star has actually increased in size due to its age. But overall though, the exoplanet uh, Kepler-452b is basically, well at least technically from a distance, looks like Earth 2.0. But, however, there is a slight problem. And the problem is in the way that this planet is. It's actually what's known as a super-Earth. Now, I'm going to explain to you why this is super-Earth and why this is not a terrestrial planet in a few minutes. But first, let's talk about its specifications. So, our assumption right now is that it's mostly made up of uh, silicates and metals with potentially a relatively thick layer of um, ices and, of course, things like water. So it might actually be a water world like this one you see here. But at the same time, um, its mass is about five times masses of Earth. It's basically a super Earth. And it's about one and a half times bigger than Earth in terms of size. Um, so the actual surface gravity here is almost twice as much as it is on Earth. Now, for this reason, we think that, first of all, this terrestrial planet most likely is filled with volcanic eruptions. It's probably not a very hospitable world. At the same time, uh, except for the volcanic eruption part, it may also be relatively similar to Venus, especially if this planet experienced the same effect known as the uh, runaway greenhouse effect that Venus has experienced, where basically all of the carbon escaped from the um, soil and from the actual deposits in the ground and entered the atmosphere. And this, of course, introduced tremendous greenhouse effects, raising the temperatures into like, well, practically a thousand degrees Celsius. Now, because this planet is more massive than Earth, there's a chance that maybe the greenhouse runaway effect hasn't happened just yet. 
it, there's still a chance that maybe this is actually a relatively interesting terrestrial world with potentially liquid water and maybe even life here. But the actual greenhouse runaway effect will eventually happen and most likely will occur within at least um, 500 million years from now. So there is a lot of things here that are different from Earth. And what's super interesting about this is that we believe that these planets, these super Earths did exist in our own solar system, but we're not entirely sure just what really happened to them. Actually, the uh, most accurate envisioning of this particular object comes directly from NASA, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, because NASA believes that this is kind of what this world currently looks like. A very, very hot, very dry, and somewhat inhospitable world. But what exactly happened to these objects in our own solar system? Well, we believe that um, due to the migration of Jupiter, they were influenced by the Jupiter's gravity to collide with each other, to essentially just explode and create terrestrial planets that we have today. So there were, may have been a couple of these um, somewhere in our solar system before, but due to their collision between these objects, um, eventually they basically fell apart and whatever was left over turned into Mars, Venus, Earth and Mercury. Now that's one of the assumptions. The other assumption is that maybe just maybe our sun actually just swallowed them up and what was left uh, was just a ring that eventually disappeared. So um, we don't really exactly know why we don't have super Earths because they're pre pretty much everywhere in, in the galaxy. But what we do know is that uh, it's very likely that because this is a super Earth, this particular object may not really be the ultimate Earth 2.0 as the media portrayed it to be a few years ago. However, the future studies, specifically from telescopes like TESS, are going to be able to actually see what's on the surface or at least in the atmosphere of this object, even though it's kind of far away, and then give us an idea of what's really happening here. Because if this has an active atmosphere, there's a very high chance there's something cool happening here. But before you ask if there's any extraterrestrial intelligence on this object, the chance for this is most likely no, because um, in the last few years, SETI, which is actually always excited to take a look at new objects and try to find any kind of signals coming from these objects, has done a very extensive search of um, close to about 10 billion different frequencies uh, that could be potentially broadcasted on from this object and they found nothing. So if there is something, it's probably not broadcasting any radio signals or at least hasn't been doing it for the past 1400 years because uh, this object is about 1400 light years away from us. Nevertheless, though, this particular object is definitely one of the most curious and most interesting exoplanets we've discovered because it's essentially the only object to date that orbits a very similar to our sun star and essentially in the same region of space as Earth. Like, how lucky is that? That's just very unusual. But at the same time, the planet itself is probably not really the same as Earth at all. As a matter of fact, this once again shows us that Earth and the solar system that we live in is just plain weird. We are actually a very big exception to the rule of other exoplanets and other stars. Even stars like the G stars that our sun is seem to have these super Earths and they seem to be everywhere, but we don't have those planets in our own solar system. And hopefully one day we'll actually know why, but for now we can only guess. And so that's pretty much it for Kepler-452b a very exciting exoplanet that hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about in the next few years. For now though, that's it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space through simulations and video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.